Hi everybody, I am so glad you're here this morning. It's a beautiful day. It's gonna be 70 degrees, uh, theoretically, uh, and I'm so looking forward to that because we really need the break in the weather. As you can see, my yard is starting to green up. How awesome is that? And all the spring flowers are coming out. Hey Bonnie, great to see you. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Rita Hickman, body mind expert, shiatsu massage therapist. Hey Doug, good to see you. And today's topic is on sleeping. You know, uh, I'm a big advocate of sleeping and I do it very, very well. But I also work with a lot of clients who don't sleep very well. Hey, Selena. And because of my uh, lifelong high anxiety level, I've, uh, I haven't I've always been a really good sleeper. Um, and so I really sought out, like I do with everything, about how we work, how our body minds work. To, to problem solve this, to figure this out. And, um, and I really nailed it probably about seven, eight years ago. And so these are the tips that I use that help me sleep really well through the night, no matter what my level of anxiety, no matter um, how, uh, what I'm worried about, uh, or anything else along those lines, okay? So I'm gonna start with my favorite, most unusual one which for me is potato salad. So, hey Amanda. So I read this great book. It was um, called Potatoes Not Prozac a number of years ago because I wanted to use food in order to help, you know, manage my moods. And uh, I didn't want to take Prozac. I didn't want to take any of those other drugs. And so, hey Margie, this book was a godsend. I don't remember who wrote it, but if you look it up, Potatoes Not Prozac, you'll find wonderful information. Here's the synopsis of it. If you protein load in the morning, and then as the day goes on, you switch over to carbs, and then you do a complex carb before you go to bed, that will help you sleep so well. A big component, two big components of sleep are uh, your blood sugar level as well as your uh, melatonin level. Those two are really important for having a sound sleep. Now, you have to have the amino acids for, you know, um, for melatonin, and you have to have food in order to manage your blood sugar. But if your blood sugar gets too low, you are going to wake up in the middle of the night. You won't be able to sleep. And so I developed the habit that I try to protein load in the morning, and as the day goes by, I do carbohydrates. Because complex carbohydrates uh, are slow-release sugars. And so if you eat something like half a baked potato or potato salad or um, really dense multi-grain bread before you go to sleep, then you're going to have a slow sugar release all night long and you're not gonna wake up because of low blood sugar. Now for melatonin, the basis of melatonin is uh, tryptophan. Tryptophan comes from protein sources. So you eat a lot of protein, um, it gives it time to digest throughout the day. Uh, the carb also makes space so the tryptophan can make it into the brain, pass the blood-brain barrier, and turn into melatonin. So that's my most fun and unique tip, and that's done wonders. Now, of course, I fall off the wagon like everybody else. And if I do wake up in the middle of the night, there are two things that I do. The first thing is I drink some water because, hey Deb, because when our body is stressed out, we don't sleep well. And so I drink half a glass of water, and then I'll go and eat my complex carb. Because remember, if your blood sugar gets too low while you sleep, you are going to wake up, period, end of story. You're gonna be awake, wonder why you're awake, wonder why you're not falling back asleep. And so you need to eat something, even if it's in the middle of the night, uh, that's a complex carb. Now for me, it's potato salad, because I love it, you know? So I try to keep some on hand, and uh, even just a couple bites, what that does is it raises my blood sugar enough again, and I can fall back asleep. Believe it or not, you're probably blaming all sorts of crazy things on uh, why you're not sleeping. Your brain's coming up with all sorts of reasons and stories and whose fault it is and who's to blame, and many times it's your blood sugar. and especially if you ate something or drank something before bed that was a simple sugar, then your blood sugar spiked, but then it took a complete dive. And when it took that dive, that's when you woke up. 
That's what happens when you drink before bed. That's what happens when you have, you know, a simple sugar before bed, ice cream or candy or something along those lines. Your blood sugar will dive and you will wake up in the middle of the night and you won't be able to fall back asleep until you eat something uh, that brings your blood sugar back up again. So that's where that whole midnight snacking thing came from for people because after, you know, after a few hours, the blood sugar goes down and you're wide awake. So, okay, what else do I do when I can't sleep? When I wake up in the middle of the light, let's say it's midnight or 2 a.m., and I've got a lot of hours still ahead of me, sometimes those hours are the most precious ones that I've got. And because no one's bothering me, I've got some time on my hands, clearly, because it's 2 a.m. And um, that's, I look at those moments as golden, as opportunities. I don't fight them. I don't get angry at them. Instead, I say, you know what, here's my quiet time to let myself really kind of be in that dream time and look at my problems, look at my life from different angles. It's an opportunity for me to problem solve. So if I wake up in the middle of the night, I don't get frustrated or angry about it. I look at it as precious and enjoyable. And when you take that judgmentalism away, you actually fall asleep a lot faster. Surprisingly, you really do. So when I look at it in that kind, non-judgmental way, it lets me um, it lets me really feel good, and I'll fall back asleep. If I'm having still having trouble falling back asleep, I've got a, a meditation process that I use. Uh, the first thing that I do is before I go to bed. If I have a hard time sleeping, then I will pray. You know, growing up Catholic, and then kind of falling away from the church. I'm not, you know, a big religious sort of person. I don't have a big icon in my mind. But what happens is when we're talking in our head to something else, it gives us just enough space for us to fall asleep. If we're talking to ourselves, then we're keeping all that activity going. We're reacting to everything. But when we're talking to somebody else, whether it's God or an angel or, you know, our imaginary friend, whoever it may be, it gives us just enough objectivity and just enough space in order to fall asleep. If this happens in the middle of the night and I want to fall back asleep, my meditation process is this. I let whatever thought come up. I comment on that thought as if I'm talking to it. Gives you that little bit of objectivity. And then I go back to my breath and pay attention to my breath. A thought comes up. I say, thank you for coming, or I'm so glad you're here, or wow, that's an interesting thought. And then I go back to my breath. If you do that about five or six times, you know, it keeps breaking that cycle because you keep taking that step away by commenting on it and observing the thought, you know, having an observation about it, and then redirecting back to your breath. I always felt that was something that uh, people who taught meditation really missed. They say, you know, when a thought comes up, let it drift through your mind like a cloud and go back to your breath. That didn't work very well for me because um, it didn't give me enough space. It didn't validate the thought. The thought still wanted to be heard. And if I kept pushing it away or ignoring it, it would come back 10 times worse. So instead, if I acknowledge it, if I own it, if I'm grateful for it, you know, without too much fluff, and then I go back to my breath, usually about five or six breaths later, I'm back out. Now, sometimes you've got a lot of thoughts on your mind and we keep circulating them through our head because we don't want to forget that we want to do them. Oh yeah, don't forget this. Oh yeah, don't forget that. That is when journaling or writing comes really handy because when you realize you don't have to remember everything because it's already written down, you don't have to um, figure it out because you've already figured it out, it lets you detach and go back to sleep, which is really, really handy. You know, if I'm trying to make sure I remember things or I'm trying to problem solve things, that's what's going to keep me awake. If you give yourself permission to do something that will help you, you know, so you don't have to remember it, so you don't have to problem solve it, that will, t that will let your body and your nervous system calm back down and that will help considerably. So yeah, writing down your worries or your wishes or your dreams, you know, that you learned as a kid, that actually helps quite a bit. 
So if I don't have time to problem solve something, then what I do is um, I remind myself that the problem's still going to be there in the morning, and that's when I'll figure it out. Or I'll say, you know what? I'm going to give this to my dreams. I'm going to give this to my subconscious mind. Here it is. I actually have a visualization where I say, here are my problems. Here are my issues. I'm going to let you solve them and give me some answers in the morning. And if I do that, if I, even, if I can picture them as gold cups or I can picture them as, as a, a, you know, a chest of objects. But what I do is I hand them over visually in my mind to something or someone else trusting that my subconscious, my mind body is going to find the solution by the time morning comes. And that takes care of a ton of things. So those are my tips for sleeping. Oh, last one, light really does affect you. So get an eye mask, you know, make sure that your phone is flipped over so the light doesn't come on, you know, every time you get a message or every time, you know, you get an update on your phone because that light, even when it pops up, totally disrupts your sleep. So turn your phone over, make sure that the light isn't going to come on while you're sleeping and, uh, and start to wake you up and you'll be in much better shape. So okay, like, comment, share, no matter where it is. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you joined me. And uh, I'm thank you for being a part of this great tribe. So you run lines from shows. Perfect, Deb. <laughs> it gives you an excellent, you know, step back. Something else to think about. Perfect. That's like what I would do with the breath, going back to focusing on the breath. So okay, comment, like, love, share and uh, be a part of this great tribe on this beautiful, beautiful spring day. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.